right, so looking closely at these two photographs, so both of these photographs, both of these photographs are uh, you know, like a walkway in a park. And what you have here is, uh, you know, some pigeons on the ground that have taken flight, so they just took off. Both photographs are taken uh, of the same group of pigeons. All right, so when we look here at the photograph on the right, in terms of selecting the shutter speed, notice some of these birds are literally in mid-flight, right? They're, they're captured, that motion's captured. So to capture this photograph, did the photographer use a fast or a slow shutter speed? Very, very fast, very, very fast. On, on the other hand, this same photo, this is also a bird's, but this is not smoke, right? This is the actual birds. You just can hardly see them because they're moving so quickly, it makes them just a blur. So this photograph was taken with a fast or slow shutter speed. Very slow. We're going to come back to these a little bit later, too. Because we're going to focus not just on the birds. We're also going to photograph in the background a little bit later. Right. Let me show you another photograph that I came across this, this last, just a couple months ago, which I really like. I was showing it at the beginning of class here. You guys were taking a look at it. Let me open it back up. So this is one of my favorite pictures for the Arizona Diamondbacks. You guys, I'm, I'm wearing my Cubs hat today, but I am first and foremost an Arizona Diamondbacks fan. And my favorite pitcher on the Diamondbacks is Archie Bradley because he's got that big old beard. I love uh, his beard to beard. If you're familiar with the Diamondbacks, when Archie Bradley comes into the game, they chant, bring in the beard, because he's got this big old beard. <laughs> right. this, this is a great photo of Archie Bradley throwing, let's just assume it's a fastball. All of Archie's pitches are fast. So let's assume that this is a 95 mile an hour fastball. And notice this is a great photo because the photo has literally frozen that baseball in midair. And remember, how fast is that baseball moving? And you can see the scene. Yeah, it's, it's moving at about 100 miles an hour. In fact, that photo is so clear that you're exactly right, Ron. You can see the seams. You can even see the printing on there as the number 42 on there. To take a photo of a baseball, and freeze the motion. Because keep in mind, as it's moving, it's, it, the baseball's turned, too. To, to freeze it in flight and to freeze that turning motion where you could actually read the, the, the lettering on there and see the seams, how fast is that shutter speed? Extremely fast. How close is the person taking the I have no idea. Well, I didn't take that yeah. <laughs> Now, so we noticed that to be able to capture that baseball in flight, the shutter speed had to be really, really fast. Okay, so let's think about this for a moment. If the shutter speed is really fast, in order to capture the, mo the motion, we're going to lose light, correct? Correct. In fact, we might lose so much light that our photo could end up being what? Not blurry, underexposed. Could be too dark. So when we increase the shutter speed in order to capture motion, we lose light. And so we need to get that light back. To get that light back, we're going to have to open up the aperture, right? So this photograph is taken with a very fast shutter speed, but a very wide open aperture. And that's going to have an effect we're going to talk about a little bit later on, because if you look at the background, if you look at the picture himself, the baseball's nice and clear, but the picture in the background is blurry. That has to do with something called depth of field, which we're going to talk about. Took that same picture and tried to use the depth of field to uh, expand the depth. Of field, uh -huh. You wouldn't have the same effect. You would. You could still technically take a photo where both of them are in focus. It's going to be very difficult though, because we're going to talk about this a little bit later. In order to, whenever you open up the aperture to let in more light, immediately your depth of field shrinks. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to use a fast shutter speed and a very closed down aperture, in which case you really run the risk of having a very underexposed photo. So it would be very difficult actually to take a photo where you've captured the motion and you have a very long depth of field, or very deep depth of field rather. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm probably we're gonna get to that. Question, Gabe. Great question. Um, before we went to break, you started seeing two different types of light moving and you didn't talk to them. I'm gonna get back to that, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about aperture. Ron, would you grab that light for me again, please? Let's talk more about aperture then. Yes. So if we remember, there's two ways to control exposure. Shutter speed or by controlling the aperture. If we don't have enough light coming through our camera, 
So if we're, if we're measuring light with our light meter, and our light meter is indicating it's going towards the negative, and we don't have enough light, there are two things we can adjust. One, I could decrease the shutter speed to let in more light. Or the other option is, I could open up the aperture probably. Remember, four parts of a modern camera. Recording medium, lens, shutter, aperture. Remember the aperture? The four parts of the camera, we have four corresponding parts in our eye. We have a lens, we have a pupil, we have the eyelids which act as a shutter, and the retina which acts as a recording medium. So if the aperture is like the pupil of your eye, right, your pupil in your eye contracts to decrease the amount of light or it dilates to let more in, right? You go into a, a dark theater, maybe you're lucky enough to go see the new Han Solo movie coming out in just a couple of weeks, right? You're in a dark movie theater, so what, is your, what does the pupil do when you go into a dark theater? So what does it do to adjust? It dilates, it opens up to let in more light. When you're done watching the movie, you come outside that bright sunlight, then it constricts down to decrease the amount of light. Your aperture in your camera does the same thing, right? Everybody grab the lens, if you would please, not off of the digital camera, but the lens from that film camera you have on your desk. So everybody grab that lens off if you would. So go ahead and grab that film camera and grab the lens out, please. And so not the digital camera, but the, the film camera. Now, if you remember, there are four parts of the camera, right? In terms of our camera, the camera body is where it's going to be the recording medium and the shutter. The lens housing is going to have the lens, but it's also going to have the aperture. So the aperture of our camera is going to be found here in the lens housing. Right? Now you can open or close down the aperture. If you look on top of your lens, if you look on top of your lens, you're going to see that there are some numbers on there. So on this lens, by the way, there's three colors. Everybody look up at me for just a moment. There's three on this lens. There's three colors. The one on the very end is, if you were looking through the camera to focus, you would turn this way. Okay. If you were zooming the lens, zooming in and zooming out, you would turn the middle collar, which is the same on our digital camera. Remember, on the digital camera, on the end is focus, this collar is zoom. But this lens has an additional collar that the lens on the digital camera does not. If you look on this collar, or on this lens, there's a collar that has some numbers on it, 22, 16, 11, 8, 5.6. You guys all see that collar there? On this camera, that collar adjusts the aperture. And those numbers, 22, 16, 11, those numbers are f-stop numbers. What I'd like you to do with your lens is I'd like you to hold it up in front of you like this so you can kind of look through it. Right? I want you to hold the lens up, and then I want you to, the collar that has those numbers on it, 22, 16, 11, I want you to turn it from the left to the right. Just turn it left and right. And as you look through the back of the lens, I want you to tell me what you see. Yeah. So as you look through the lens, as you turn that collar, you should see, first of all, you see the aperture, right? So looking up here, if you're looking through the lens, you can see the edges of the aperture. And then as you turn it from left to right, you're going to see that the aperture constricts down, or as you turn it the other way, it opens up, right? So if you are in a dark environment outside, no light, right, sunset, what would you do with your aperture? You would turn it so that the aperture is open. If you were taking photos and it was really, really bright, then you might close it down. Is, is there something coming down? 